वेलकम टू स्टोरीज विद सुजाता अ चैनल टू एम्पावर एनर्जाइज एंड एक्सेलरेट योर लाइफ In a recent coaching conversation with a senior leader we realized that she was feeling very burnt out because she was not getting enough time to actually concentrate on the kind of tasks that were most important in her to-do list she ended up doing everything all by herself and that is not a really good place to be so then we realized why it was so difficult for her to delegate we got into a conversation and it brings me to delegation and why it is so necessary delegation is one of the most critical skill sets for any leader and this is why delegation helps empower your employee it not just helps empower your employee it also increases their morale increases their job satisfaction and ultimately it helps free up all the time that has been stuck in doing endless tactical activities because as a leader you are expected to do strategic activities not tactical activities now that we've established how critical delegation is let's come to the how how do we become a master delegator it just takes five simple steps to become an effective delegator step 1 analyze so what are you expected to do create an entire task list a list of all the tasks that you perform on any given day in any given week after you've created the list of tasks you need to start ranking those tasks prioritizing the, those tasks and actually differentiating those tasks how do you differentiate you need to differentiate them under tasks that can be done only by you so these are the critical tasks so you set them aside then there are certain tasks that you realize are not even required are useless are redundant take them off the list the third kind of tasks are those tasks that you can partially delegate or completely delegate now these are the tasks that you need to concentrate on step 2 select a delegate now this is very important what are the attributes what are those qualities that you need to see in your delegate to select him for this task one the skill whether the person has the skill and many times the person may not have the skill but he may have the potential that you're actually looking for so that will do okay two whether the person has the interest to work on such a delegated task very important three most important whether the person actually has the time in his kitty to work on your delegated task because many a time this is something that many leaders do not look at this is something that you need to consider So unless and until you have a clear visibility on the kind of tasks that the person is currently performing your team member is currently performing this will become a difficulty for you third define the task what is it that you expect from your team member that means one very clearly define the objective of this particular activity or task what is expected from the team member two what are those milestones that you're looking at what is non negotiable in this task what is something that the person can do if he has the time is good to do okay so these are the milestones in the task third very importantly what are the timelines involved imagine you know there was a recent conversation in which we realized that there was a project that was given a task that was delegated but the timelines were not mentioned they were not even discussed So what happened was the team member thought my manager has given me such a big responsibility let me sit on it let me keep thinking about how to do this best and what happened was a timeline that was not met so that's very important okay these three considerations step 4 we need to provide support support of the kind of information that the team member may require the kind of knowledge that he or she needs to be applying also the kind of skills and resources that they may need 
So this is extremely important. Many leaders just delegate and get away with it. And that's exactly why we don't get good quality of outcome. So we need to concentrate on this. It does take a while, but once the team member is used to it, the first and second time, the third time onwards, they don't need our support. They're on their own. So this fourth step is extremely essential. Last extremely important step, monitor progress. In the beginning itself, when we are delegating a task after doing all of these steps, we need to help a team member know that we are there to support him and we will be monitoring the progress of this delegated task from time to time. There need to be agreed upon meetings and catch-ups in order for you to review this progress, the progress of this delegated task with your team member. Once you're done with all these five steps, you have mastered delegation. So let me give you a task for this week. The task is write down you know, anything that you touch, any task that is a part of your kitty for this entire week. That's the first step. Second, choose at least one task that you can comfortably delegate and then start applying the five steps that we talked about. If you like my video, like, share, subscribe and comment to my channel. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get all the new notifications of new uploads. You can catch me on Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. So what are you waiting for? Keep accelerating.